Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here and my lovely wife, Dr. Maureen. Yes, hallelujah. We want to talk to you again about finance. And, yes, uh, wealth. It's wealth and getting money to you, not just getting money from you, but how to get more money to you. The body of Christ has got to get a hold of God's plan for prosperity, health, wealth, joy, peace, and highly favored to the body of Christ. Yes. And that's what we're about, and that's what the Millionaire yeah. Book is about, and that's the book, so many books we write on trying to help people grasp that God wants them prosperous. Yes, and you know, the word says Jesus became poor, that we might be rich. And so, so we entering into that, what's in the kingdom and what Jesus provided for us. And so I, really, I tried poverty yeah. and I tried wealth, wealth and wealth. I like wealth better. <laughs> I just, well, it's really interesting. Uh, I'm going to talk about transfer of wealth uh, today because um, when we were at one of uh, Kenneth Copeland's meetings, he had a prophetic word over us, mm -hmm. and he said that uh, that there, that we're in the line of great transfer of wealth. We are first in line, and the, the, the line, line is, is moving. moving. And so, right after that prophetic word, of course, we meditated on that. We we, we are so thankful we cut our teeth with Kenneth Copeland and Gloria. And we've learned, we read all their books, and we've meditated, and we've seen so many miracles and trans transformation in our lives, uh, along with the Word of God and, and their mentorship. But it was really exciting because... And we're so into their ministry. Oh, yes, we do very and it much. produces. Yes. But, you know, it was really interesting because after he gave us that Word, we began to meditate of course, on that word and believing and declaring it. And we have seen tremendous wealth come into our life within the last couple of years. But uh, so I want to talk about what God has revealed to us. Some of the things, you know, you can't always say everything, but uh, about transfer of wealth. And so, uh, so I want to go back to the uh, where where the Old Testament is an outward picture of the inward working of the new covenant. And so um, we know that Moses was, you know, he was with his 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 uh, flock, okay. And there was a burning bush, and and the burning bush was God. Who then began to speak to Moses, call and said, "Hey, I've heard the cry of my people. I call you into Egypt now to go there to deliver them out of the slavery." And so. God called them there and to bring them back to the land flowing with milk and honey. So these are the things that were really interesting. When Moses went there, he did the nine plagues, or supernatural miracle, and, and nothing changed in their lives. But then the tenth, as Dr. Tom was talking about, about the tenth, the last, our last show, was that when the tenth came, that was the one was uh, where they applied the blood. He said, now I want you to take a, a lamb, and I want you to uh, now uh, take the, its blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lentil, and then uh, be protected. And then Go when the, and when the the destroyer comes through, I, I won't let them into that house to touch you because the blood is there and the blood is all powerful will protect you from the destroyer. And so the blood of that lamb, which was the blood of Christ Jesus. Picture set them of, yep. free, right. set them free from uh, Egypt. Well, it, now the blood when we receive Christ Jesus sets us free from this world and its system and its captivity in prison that we have been a slave to the world system. Well, they got set totally set free. But, but also, them, yeah. they, they were to go in and lock the door yeah. and, and they were to consume and all of the lamb, yeah. burn the fat, which is a picture yeah. of yeah. getting rid of some of the old ideas and notions that may live in the soul, and take those things, wash them out with the water yeah. of the word, and receive the word of God, which is eat all of the lamb. Amen. We're now responsible to eat, eat the all. word. We may not like everything that's in it, but it's still everything in it is good for us. Yeah, we need to eat it all. And so I just want to read the scriptures, you know, where uh, Exodus 12, 7 says, uh, the, the, the Lord said to them, and they shall take some of the blood and put it on the, the doorpost and then on the lentil and of the house where they will eat it, okay? Then the Lord said to them, Exodus 12, 23, for the Lord will pass through the, and strike the Egyptians 
And when he sees the blood on the lentil and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer That's to Satan. come into kill, the house steal, destroy. to strike them. So the yes. enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So, so this set them totally free. So then they were totally set free to now go to the land flowing with milk and honey. That's a picture of us, that when we receive Christ Jesus, the blood of Christ Jesus now has, will That's set right. us free, the redemption of the blood, and we will now enter into the land flowing with milk and honey, the kingdom of God that is in us. But then, this was so interesting, because we're talking about today, the transfer of wealth, is that uh, then God said to them that I want the women to go in, knock on the doors of the Egyptians and gather their and take or gather their gold and their silver and their clothing and they would leave with all the wealth of Egypt. And they handed it over to them. They did. Well, this is for us that God wants us to know that uh, that now in the new covenant there is a transfer of wealth. That not that we knock on the doors, but because of the blood of Christ Jesus, and He became poor that I might be rich. That wealth now is mine, and I in 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 my prayer time and calling forth, I I command the wealth of the sinner to come into our Begin lives. Begin to knock on the Be door of their heart with the word. That's yeah, right. and it's the responsibility of declaring it and expecting it and receiving it because the sinner will use it for evil but we will use yes. it to build the kingdom of God. That's right. And so God has given us this revelation in, in Ecclesiastics uh, uh, 2.26 says, those that please the Lord, he gives, them well, he gives them wisdom, knowledge, and happiness, but to the sinner, he gives them the task of gathering the wealth, storing it up, and handing it over to those that please the Lord. Well, we please the Lord. So, the sinner... This world and this system is really working for us. They're gathering the wealth, they're storing it up, and we are to ask, it's our responsibility to ask for it and as we pray and believe that it's ours because we will use it for good and they will use it for evil. And so it was really good that God was giving us that revelation and calling it they're into our get, life. Getting all they can, can all they get, and sit on the can. That's what they're doing. But that's for us. That's us. They work for us. But we have a responsibility to to claim it and call it into our lives and into the righteous lives to build the kingdom of God. And their responsibility, their purpose, the word says, is to is to gather the wealth and store it up to give it to us. That that's their purpose. The, when they're wicked and evil and sinners, that's it. What and, kind of really solidifies this yeah. kind of teaching is to go to Luke chapter 19 and look at what the man said that had only one menace. He buried it in his yeah. mattress. You're going to talk or about that buried too. in the ground. Yeah. In the ground, yeah. yeah. And yeah, and he said, I know that you're a heavy taskmaster. You take Speaking what to Jesus. Yeah. Speaking to Jesus. <laughs> you you take what you haven't sown and and uh, the seeds you haven't planted you you take. And and so, so he knew that, he saw that. Yeah, he yeah. take and so also I want you to gather this, okay? So we see this and they did get it, they did give it, and it says here, Psalms hundred and five thirty seven says and he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among their, his tribes. So there was none sick among them. So this is a picture to us that in the kingdom of God, we are now under the blessings of God. Jesus became poor that I could be rich. Jesus, on the, by his the stripes, I healed. am healed. Right. And so the blessings are all mine, and Jesus took on the curse and defeated it totally. So the curse should not be in my life. That's correct. And so it was really interesting. But the, the Lord began to really speak to me about, do you know when Abraham, I uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they lived in the promised land, that land flowing with milk and honey, and they never built anything. They had their flocks, they had their herds, they were very wealthy, but they lived in tents. Well, God then uh, called them into Egypt. They stayed in Egypt for 430 years. While they were in Egypt, and but they did leave with all the gold and silver of Egypt, the world and its system. But while they were in Egypt, the world and its system was building the promised land. 
They built the cities. The Bible said the cities. They built the mansions. They built the vineyards. They dug the uh, wells. the wells. They 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 did all of that. And then God said, now that it's done and it's finished, now you're going to go in and take the land. And so God says to us now, this is what he says, I give you land with large flourishing cities that you did not build. So now we need to take our cities that, yes, the world and and, and, and Lord builds these cities and, and the world system builds these cities, but they're building it for us, not for them. And when we be passive and we let them be filled with evil and do horrible things, you know, we are not doing what God called us to do. We need to claim cities. No, no, no. These are our cities. Uh, they built them for us, but now God has given them to us. And we need to begin to see, receive our cities. What's interesting about it okay. is it can be troubling to hearts to hear it to a degree because there's been something that does not exist built into the hearts of people. Okay. And that is, is that this word fair, F-A-I-R, does not exist but has been created because there is nothing fair no. in the universe. There is nothing yeah. fair. Yeah. We, we need to get it out of our vocabulary because fair does not exist, but they've tried to create it so that when we hear something like this, it's not fair. Yeah. But it is fair it because is fair. God owns it all, and, and he God, wants to give it to his kids. And, so chill out. Yes, and also this, though, that, that the sinner, it says there, is to work for us. That's their choice. They, That's they it. They choose to be wicked. They choose to do wicked things. Uh, and so God says, well, guess what? You know, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. Well, who's the just? It's us that love the Lord that is building the kingdom of God. It's, for, it's not for greed. It's for building the kingdom worldwide. And, uh, so, and so anyway, but then he said I, that, that he says to us, now you're in the kingdom. I give you houses and, and uh, you know, I give you houses and I give you uh, goods that you did not provide for. I give you uh, wells that you did not dig and vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. And so now in the Old Testament, that, that was what, what they got in the promised land. In the new covenant of, of grace now, that the kingdom of God's in us, that now this, these things are ours and we need to know our names on homes that we didn't build and, and, and good things that are in there that we did not provide, that our names are on businesses that we didn't plant. And uh, calling that into our life through our prayers and believing now and letting God do that. Now, I don't want to go down the street and say, okay, that business now, I'm going to claim that as mine. No, 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 no. I'm saying to God, you're going to give that to me now. And I'm going to receive it because God said, I gave it to them, but I claim it for me. Yeah. Does it, that make uh, oh, yeah. help it's... you to understand that this is ours? And it isn't... Um, you know, that we claim it and let God, we trust God and God brings things to us and God brings, you know, the great wealth that he has for us. When we think about, hmm? we think about salvation isn't fair. Yeah. To Satan, it is definitely not yeah. fair. If we get a word from God about God wanting to bless us, what does the enemy do? He comes immediately to, to steal, steal it. Why? Because that's destroy. not fair. Yeah. It's, it's not fair that you're going to get blessed. And so that's where all of the accusations yeah. come from, is from, that's not fair. How come you have this and I don't have this? What, I, so I want you to give me what you have in yeah. order to make it fair. Fair does not exist and it never will. No matter what or how we fight for it, yeah. it doesn't exist. But when we receive our purpose the word and of declaring, our purpose, declaring what the wicked have, live by the word of God. have done, and then we declare that God says cities are ours. It's not for the looting and the stealing and the killing and the destroying. No, I claim those cities as ours. Yes, God, I have names. I have my names on houses I didn't build. And so you're going to turn it over to me. 
uh, to build, you know, all so this stuff is to build the kingdom of God in a way that we are believing for it, the transfer of wealth. Maybe it's even it deeper than that because okay. if you go back to Genesis in chapter 4, you find that when Cain was thrown out of the garden after killing Abel, yeah. he became the builder of cities. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so the whole gospel uh, that we have in front of us is trying to say to us the reason God places churches in cities is to take the cities back. Yes, of course. For yeah, the kingdom of God. That's, that's so good. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if the cities are staying corrupted, then it's because we're not doing enough to get the gospel into it. That's okay. That's it. And claiming it. And I, claiming I, feel, it. I feel like Claim we it. are too passive and not not seeing what the word is saying exactly and right. not receiving it by faith in the kingdom. Amen. Now these are the scriptures that I want to uh, speak to you today about claiming and I have a card that has the scriptures on it about the wealth because God said to us, yeah. you need to meditate on this because I've called you to now bring the body of Christ into the wealth that I've already planned for them and have that revelation that you're seeing it happen in your own life now bringing it to the, the the body of Christ. And so uh, the new covenant here says in Isaiah 65 says, then you will look and be radiant and your hearts will throb and be filled with joy. Uh, the wealth of the seas will be brought to you and to you the riches of nations will come. So here God is saying, this is in my new covenant. The wealth of the, the seas will, are going to come to you. The wealth of the nations are going to come to you. And so we need to call that into our life. Joshua, uh, 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 was it 61, 6 and 9 says this, And you will call the priests of the Lord. And that's what we are. We're called the priests of the Lord. Yep. And you will name ministers of our God. That's what we will be. You will be those named ministers of God. And you will feed on the wealth of the nations. So now we're going to feast on the wealth of the nations. And in their riches, you will boast. That's right. And so we'll be in their riches and we will boast that God has done this for us. God has given this to us. All right. Instead of your shame, you will receive a double portion. And so this is in the new covenant of grace is that the new covenant is better than the old. And so in the new covenant, we get a double portion of it and instead of disgrace you will rejoice in your abundance your inheritance and you and so you will inherit a double portion in the land and an everlasting joy will be yours yes Amen. and That's i the That's lord love justice yeah. i hate robbery and wrongdoing i I am faithful and I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offsprings among the people and all who see them will acknowledge that they are people God has blessed. We've seen that in our families. Absolutely. Yeah, we're Absolutely. first generation Christians. So if we have meditated on the wor word of God, because right. God called us when we came out here to Arizona. I was 30, you were 32, and God said, seek my prosperity for the sake of the house of the Lord. And so we looked up the scriptures, we meditated on them, we confessed them, we read the books of Copeland and Gloria and, and all the other faith people that right. we did. And then we broke that poverty that was, oh, we were so poor, broke that poverty off our life. We didn't know that God was calling us at that time to build a $22 million church. And, uh, but that's all done. It's been done for 20 years now. Taking and the gospel almost, around the world. Taking it around the world. So we didn't know God's all good. of that. But, but now our children, because we're the first generation, so our children just walk in it. They just live oh it. They're gosh. blessed of the Lord. Blessed. Oh, my gosh. So, so Isaiah 60. They actually 11. say that. They actually say that. They yeah, tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You so fought the battle, but we get to live in it. That's what they say. Yeah, we fought the battle. We get to live yeah. in it. That's Therefore, good. your gates shall be open continuously, and you shall not, uh, and they shall not be shut day and night, and that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles and their kings in possession. 
So that's what God's saying. Yeah, bring the wealth. Bring the wealth is coming to us. Uh, and Gentile there means the Everything heathen. happens by faith. Right there it says it again. Everything happens by faith. That man will bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles. That word Gentiles means the wealth of the heathen and their kings in possession. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's good. That's very good. So talking about this transfer of wealth, we have to realize Deuteronomy uh, 6, 10, 11, and I'll say it again so we come into that under, uh, knowing and, and meditating and bonding to it. He says that the Lord your God will bring you into the land which he has sworn to your fathers, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he will give you large, beautiful cities which you did not build. So there we are. We, we enter into this promised land. We're under the blood covenant now with Christ Jesus, the new covenant. But Abraham is the covenant we're under now, the covenant of grace. And that now he says, this is yours. Your house is full of all good things which you did not fill and, and uh, wells that you did not dig and vineyards and olive, uh, olive trees which you did not plant. What do you do without the olive trees? <laughs> You don't like olive. Yeah, well, okay. our grand, great granddaughter. Yes, that's right. Olive. Okay, olive. That's true. Yeah, we like so olives. now you got to like we love olives. olives. That's right. All that's right. So we're seeing this. Great granddaughter. But now this is interesting. So I want to read Exodus uh, uh, three seventeen says, and I have promised to bring you into, in, out of the land of, of Egypt. Okay, mm -hmm. out of that. And into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the, the Hivites, the, the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. So God said, I'm going to bring you into that. Uh, Joshua 24, 13 says, I have given you a land for which you did not labor, a city which you did not build, and you dwell in them. And you eat of the vineyards and the olive groves which you did not plant. So there What's it is. In Joshua. Is Joshua's name is Yeshia. Jesus. And it's in the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And it means he, he who saves, which is Christ Jesus. Christ Jesus. So that was Jesus just speaking to him. I'm giving you this. Yeah, this is it. And, that ought to settle it. Yes. And then we see in Matthew 25, 24, you know, when when uh, Jesus gave the silver and gold, right. you know, uh, to them, and they doubled their money, they doubled it, and then when they came to the, the last one that had won, he buried it. And then he said he had received the one talent, came and said, and some call it gold, and the Lord, I know you are a hard man. That's what the man says. I know what you've done. I know, right. I've heard that you, you know, destroyed all the Canaanites and all of them, and you gave them that land flowing with milk and honey, and they didn't build that. They didn't do any of that, so I know that's who you are. He said, hard man, reaping where you have not sown, gathering where you did not scatter seed. Oh, my goodness. God wants us to realize this, that God says, this is what you to claim. Because he gives that to us. God said, I, will I am giving you the land of the heathen. I'm giving it to you. And, and this is what the man was saying. I know you do this, Jesus. I know this is how you act. There's, so we need to enter that are, into that to, to now receive what is ours. There's some people out there that wealth. may struggle with that to some degree. I ask you to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to show you the truth. Because that this is the truth. It's the in the Word of God. God. This is the truth, and the world has tried to twist that so that it's difficult for you to grasp because you have a wrong perception and belief about it. So I just challenge you to make sure the Take scriptures the scripture. is true. There they are. Jesus wants to get it to you. Don't let religion or the devil religion. tell you anything different. Yeah, yeah. And realize they will use it for evil but you will use it to expand the kingdom worldwide. And that has to be your heart, uh, uh, is to want it so that you can see people get saved. You can see the move of the Holy Ghost. You can see families change. You can see orphanages uh, built. You can see the widows taken care of. You can see churches happen. You can see the power Eating of the what hungry. Christ Everything has done, done yeah. covered this earth. Mm -hmm. And when you leave it up to the wicked to have all of that, they're going to destroy 
Christianity. They're going to kill, steal, and destroy people's lives and that. So we, we, we love them. We love people. We want them to come to the saving knowledge. But our we don't prayer like their, is... We don't like their behavior, that's no. for sure. But we love, we love everyone, okay, as God does. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Of course we love them. But our heart is to claim what God already gave to us so that we can, can use the finances to build the kingdom and they can't use it for you know, sex trafficking and all the mean and horrible things that the wicked use it for. And it's the enemy working through them. And we want them to get saved and come to repentance, but we have to understand in our prayers, we have to agree with the word. Praise Always God. agree oh. with the word. You want to pray for people out there? That yes, yes. And just giving a testimony, as, as God said that to us, we began to meditate. and. And just before the, well, right when the, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 uh, the pandemic happened in, in the world now, the uh, COVA, the Lord said to us, as we were so excited about it, we couldn't wait to give our tithes and offerings. And as we gave it, we prayed over it. We were so excited. We got in the car. We we're heading home. And the Lord said, you're not, you're not getting the full benefit of your giving. We went, what? Well, anyway, then the Lord began to show us the, we looked up the scriptures on our giving. We began to meditate on them and, and do what God was telling us to do because we knew how important it is to meditate, to confess, to look at the, the scriptures, and the revelation started to flow in our We're life. We're starting to see 60-fold 60, 60 return on yes, our Yes, and we are seeing the wealth yeah. <laughs> of the sinners coming to us and transfer of great wealth that is happening in our lives. And so that we can expand the kingdom worldwide. So while we're in the midst of this situation, the government hasn't given us any money for the ministry that we have. The, uh, but when you the say, word for winners, say sinners were separated into the world. Yeah. Yes. yes the world, world finance is available for us out there. And yeah, God and desires for yeah, so we have we have seen us. God doing it. So we have not experienced any loss at all. We have seen great wealth coming at a time like this, and only God can do that. Uh, you want to pray for their salvation? If you never received Jesus, we want to make sure you get an opportunity to receive him right now. All you have to do is pray this prayer with me. It has nothing to do with religion, nothing to do with anything you have to give up or do. You just allow the Word to work in your life when you receive it. Jesus is the word that became flesh. Amen. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Boy, do we need some truth around this world today. So reach out and receive Christ. Just pray with me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of all my and sins. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life. Jesus. Be my Lord Be my and Lord. my Savior. And my Savior. In Jesus' name. Amen. And then tell somebody that you prayed that prayer, you received Christ. Jesus said, you confess me before man, I'll confess you before my Father which is in heaven. And your life is going to change. You will never be the same. But don't let religion get you. And there is a phone number there. Call that number. There's somebody there that wants to pray with you.